Hi, so this is the third video on a series of videos on job order cost accounting. If you haven't seen the previous video yet, and I highly recommend you watch it because a lot of the principles that we are using here has already been discussed in the previous video. So you can check that out in the description below as well. So let's get started on labor costs. So. so if you've seen the last video, and again, I highly recommend you watch it, labor costs so in a very similar fashion as material cost. So just like material, we purchase, in this case, workers' time. So in a material cost flow, of course, we're talking about material. So what we're purchasing is the materials. But in this case, we're talking about the labor. And when we talk about labor, what we're purchasing is their time, their time to do work, their time to manage stuff. And of course, after we purchase their time, just like materials, we assign their times to jobs depending on what they worked on. So you can see this data in something called clock cards and time tickets where in companies, you can track how much did the worker spend on certain jobs. So let's say, for example, worker one spend, spent time in job one, job two, job three. Worker two spent time in job one and job two. And worker three spent time only in job two. So all of this data is tracked, again, in a job order cost accounting system. Because again, our goal in this system is to track how much is spent on each individual job so we can perform better analysis on it have better insights, all that good stuff. So that's the importance of having all this data so that we can track stuff. So just like materials, it's, it's almost exactly the same. When we, start with, when we start the process by purchasing, we pay it off with cash. So that's why we credit cash or maybe accounts payable. And we debit factory payroll, which is, of course, an expense account. So this is something like salary expense. But in this case, we call it factory payroll. It's where we keep all the expenses we've used on our workers. Uh, when we spent on their time and all that. After that, of course, we have to know where did they actually spend their time. So just like material, um, material has direct and indirect costs, right? In labor, we also have the same thing. We have direct labor costs and indirect labor costs. So if it's a la direct labor costs, we put the cost into the job cost sheet, just like material. Indirect labor cost goes to factory overhead because you don't know where the cost was assigned. I mean, you don't know where it went. You don't know if the worker actually worked in job one. If he was just standing in the factory for 10 hours, you don't know if he was working on job three or job five. They're indirect. You cannot assign them to a certain job. That's why indirect labor costs, just like indirect materials, are assigned to the factory overhead ledger. While direct labor costs, since we know where they are specifically assigned, we know if they were assigned in job one, in job 51, job 89, we put them in the that job's job cost sheet. So in the ledger, you will see it like this. Factory payroll will be credited. This time, we take away from the factory payroll and transfer the cost to the inventory. I mean, the goods in process inventory or the factor head in the case of indirect labor. So it's like we're transferring the cost. Because in the first part, remember, we, we incurred the cost by paying out cash. So we debited factory payroll. In this case, we want to transfer that cost to the job for direct labor or two factory overhead for indirect labor. Okay, so again, this might be all confusing, so I'm going to give you an example. So let's say we have worker one. Let's say we only have one worker for an entire production. Let's say we have worker one and he spends 40 hours of work in this week. He spends 40 hours in work this week and we pay him $10 per hour. So simple math, 40 hours times $10 per hour, that gives us $400 in the week. So, of course, we pay our workers right in a weekly basis or in a monthly basis, so we don't pay them directly when they incur the hour. So, that's why we do it, and that's why we're doing this example in this way. So, let's say by the end of the week, okay, we pay him $400. So, we credit cash for 100 because we paid him with cash, and we debit factory payroll because we take into account the fact that we paid him. So, we put that in the factory payroll account, which is an expense account. Okay, let's say when we run through his time cards and his clock cards and his time tickets, we find out that worker one of these 40 hours, worker one was working in job one for 10 hours. So let's do the math. He worked for 10 hours in job one. We pay him for $10 per hour. So how much did we spend on job one using worker one? So you can pause the video and figure it out. You get it? So basically we do the same thing. We Multiply $10 per hour with 10 hours, that gives us $100. So we spent $100 in job one using worker one. 
So now we account that cost in the goods and process inventory of job one, and we take away that cost from factory payroll because we're already assigning costs. We already know where they're going, so they don't stay in the factory payroll anymore. Now we know that $100 of labor time was actually used in job one, and we take that account in the ledger. We take it in account when we adjust at the end of the period. We have 40 hours done, 40 hours minus 10 hours, we have 30 hours left. So of the remaining 30 hours, worker one worked in job two for 20 hours. Again, you can pause the video if you'd like to answer it yourself. So now we know that worker one spent 20 hours in job two, meaning we spent $200 in job two. Why? Because we pay him $10 per hour. So $10 per hour times 20 hours, that gives us $200. Meaning we spent $200 on job two using or through worker one. So again, we do the same thing. We take it away from factory payroll. We take the 200 that we've already signed in the factory payroll. We take 200 away and we put it in the goods and process inventory. We do that by crediting factory payroll by 200 and by debiting goods and process inventory of job two. So again, in this case, this is the use of having job order cost accounting is to know at which jobs were things accounted for, at which jobs did the worker spend time, at which jobs did the material was used. And that's basically the, the essence of job order cost accounting, to know where is our money being spent exactly. Okay, going forward. So now we know that he's used up 30 hours of his time, so he has 10 hours left. And in these 10 hours, he only used it and work around the factory. So according to his time tickets and his clock cards, we don't know what job he spent it on, but we know that he was working in the factory. So in this case, we can't assign cost to a job because we don't know where he was spending his time in. It's not in the time tickets, it's not in the clock card. So we can't say he was in job one. We can't say he was in job two because we don't know. And that is what we call an indirect labor cost. And if we have an indirect labor cost, where do we assign it to? Yep, we assign it to factory overhead. So now we assign $100 of cost into our factory overhead. We transfer the $100 from factory payroll and we put it into the factory overhead temporarily because we have not yet assigned overhead to specific jobs. Okay, so that's basically it. So this is a very simple way to look at things, but that's basically what will happen. Now you can see that the 400, the 40 hours that he spent in this week has already been assigned to every, I mean, has been assigned fully. So 10 hours was in job one, 20 hours was in job two, and 10 hours was doing general work. So we know where these 40 hours went. So we, as managers, as people who use managerial accounting, we have to assign these hours to their specific jobs. We can't leave it at factory payroll. We have to take it away from factory payroll and put it into the jobs that it was assigned to or in factory over overhead if it wasn't assigned to a specific job. So that's labor cost flow. So not much different from material cost flow at all. It's just that this time we are using labor's time. We're using people's time in the jobs rather than materials. So they're very, very the same. So if you haven't seen the last video and you're confused of a few concepts here, you can find it in the link in the description below. And in the next video, we'll be talking about overhead, finally. So where are these all, all these factory overhead going? Why aren't we assigning any overhead costs to our jobs? So I will answer that in the next video, which you can find in the link in the description below. So until then, see you, and I hope you learned something.